Welcome to the Oak Tree Community Church Bible Study Series that we call SOAP. And uh, of course, that we didn't make that up, but a lot of people use that. SOAP stands for Scripture, where you read the Bible. Observation, where you say what it says. Application is what am I supposed to do about this or what am I supposed to know? Sometimes it's not a do. It's just, you yeah. know, what should yeah. I know about this? And not all of them fit. Right? Yeah. But yeah. you wouldn't expect every verse to fit you every single day of your life. You should, yeah, <laughs> right? probably not. Yeah. But then, what's the P? but then P is we should pray about it, right? Yeah, exactly. And so soap gives us this concept of, um, of uh, you know, washing ourselves with the scriptures. You know, you know yeah. Psalm 119 says, how can a, a young man keep his way pure? By staying connected to the scripture and meditating and memorizing and that sort of thing. So, yeah. so we read the Bible and we try to live it right. out. Right? right. And I know most people don't, but if you keep a journal of it too... It actually is very helpful. Yeah. Um, it's helpful for you to go back, you know, two years ago and go, that's what I believed. <laughs> and, no, but you see your growth yeah. through there because when you're, you know, in the woods, you don't see your growth. And, yeah. and it's really a good, a good way to, you know, figure out where you're at in your life. And you figure if I grew that much. Hey, maybe I should continue keep going. <laughs> and yeah. keep going. And yeah. and and if you're journaling prayer requests, then or prayers that you're you know things that you're praying for, then right. you, know, you can see answers to prayer and how you've right. grown that way too. And the shift, yeah, the shift in your prayers too. Yeah. I need, I need yeah. to God. Can you help my friend? Yeah. Uh, you know, what are you doing that I can be a part of? Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. So that actually f- sort of fits where we're at because we're in the book of Acts. We are seeing the. As Christianity is is slowly working its way out into the world, pagans are being introduced to the gospel. Jews are trying to figure out how this fits with Judaism, uh, how Jews and Gentiles fit together. How do we live out this teaching? And uh, we're running in in, uh, chapters 14 and 15, a little little bit into 16 this week. Right. So where where does that put us then? Well, what's kind of cool, as you said last week, there was the big revelation was... The gospel message is for Gentiles too. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah, well, but that there was yeah. it was huge. Yeah. It was huge in there, and we saw Barnabas and Paul team up, and and they went to uh, Antioch, and uh, were they there over a year? I think yeah. uh, that they taught. Uh, we saw the apostle James was killed. No, not not Jesus's half brother, but the other the other James, yeah, John's brother, right? Yeah. Um, and then we saw Peter put in prison and was freed. So we're we, we're seeing a lot of action going on here. Yeah. Uh, King Herod dies, uh, kind of a grisly a grisly death in there. And then we see uh, uh, Barabbas and Paul go out on their first mission trip. Yeah. And, you know, kind of a kind of a cool thing. Um, And this is the same Barnabas from chapter four who had done the, you know, sold sold some of his property or whatever. He was given the nickname Son of Encouragement. We saw him really pulling Paul in or, you know, Saul of Saul of Tarsus into ministry. Yep. And, you know, and then he went and got him. And then he too. went and got him, yeah. and, and they spent this year at Antioch. And then in the beginning of chapter 13, the Holy Spirit said, all right, you two, you've had your trial period training wheels off. And now it's time to get out there and yep. and you know yeah. scour the Gentile world. Uh, so they went out. They had an initial success. You know, woo, of course, God's on our side. Yay. And then the Jews got jealous. Yeah. Right? And, and the Jewish... Um, and we'll see this happening over and over again. Yeah. Um, they got jealous and they started to contradict what Paul said. They started to take over, get mad. So Paul and Barnabas, um, and I, lo- I love it, they shook, shook the dust off their, their shoes and left. Kept going. Went to yep. the next place. Yep. And that's where we pick up this week. Yeah, so so chapter 13 and 14 is often called uh, Paul's first missionary journey or, or something. And so we're picking up sort of like the yeah. second half of... Yeah. of when in that. reality, I mean, it probably is his first missionary journey, but he also, he already did a yeah. lot of missionary work right. around Taurus, right? His, yeah. his hometown. Yeah. Um, it's just... Not published, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. right. So this much. is his first one where he's where yeah. that we know about. Yeah. But we, yeah, he had definitely done a lot of, of a lot of you know, upwards to ten years possibly of ministry right. already. Right. So, so um, they go to a new place, and is, is it 
Iconium? Yeah. Is that the right, right mm-hmm. way to say it? Okay. And imagine this. They went to the Jewish synagogue first. Always. And, and we'll see this. Yeah, it definitely has a pattern. And and it says both the Jews and the Greeks believed. So the Gentiles, who would have been the Greeks, and the Jews believed. And there was huge success there. And then, Again. Right? Yeah. guess what happened? <laughs> right? The Jews of the area stirred up the crowd. And um, the Gentiles, the Jews, and, and actually the leaders of that area tried to stone them. Yeah. So they moved on. I think while, especially as we're getting into this now, there's something that I think is is worth pointing out uh, for just as we're reading this. And that is, um, and you've said it a couple of times, and it's yeah. right here just in these yeah. first the couple of, of the verses <laughs> yeah. where it says, the Jews. Yeah. It's not like every Jewish person in the area is anti-Paul and anti-Christianity right. you know Christianity because he, it says Jews are being saved. Right. So what does it mean, the Jews? The I think it's being used the same way we see it in the Gospels. It's, it's, it's the, the Jewish religious leaders. It's, it is the, the group of Jews who are still holding on to Judaism, who are still holding on to tradition as opposed to believing in in uh, Christ. So Christian. so it's not the Jews versus the non-Jews here, but it's the Jewish traditionalists and and I call them Jewish legalists versus those who are actually accepting Jesus as Messiah. Yeah, so, and that's a really good point because because if you read this, it does say a lot of Jews and Greeks believed, but then the stoning occurs and you're like, okay, did they really believe is right. uh, we find out later, yes they did, but yeah. at this point we're kind of little unsure of what's yeah going so we on. don't want to be thrown off by that phrase the jews as if it's everybody yeah, yeah. And you bring up a good point too um this is now uh twice and we'll see it we'll see it happens more where there's persecution yeah. going on uh, especially with barnabas and paul it's, you know so the question is where was Paul's head? Where was Barnabas's head? Yeah. Certainly, we know that um, Paul, you know, met Jesus, right? <laughs> and Jesus told him to do this. Uh, okay, okay, that's going to take me. But by the time I get to the third or fourth town, and now, now I'm getting possibly stoned. Yeah. Am I doing something wrong? Yeah. It, it, you know, it seems like um, he had to be questioning himself. You almost, you almost have to. You'd think yeah. if he's if he's human at all, if there's any yeah. emotion at all, at some point you think, what, yeah. what's going on here? Yeah. I'm doing what didn't I? Am I not doing what I what you told me to do? Yep. So I played a bunch of sports, and I, I was a coach, and I know you played a bunch of sports, and you were a coach too. And one of the things you always look for, and I, coach in baseball, one of the things you always look for is with the pitcher, where's his head? Yeah. You know what, and it's really what is he thinking? Because when they're out there struggling, at some point you can tell, right? They give up, right? You know, and you got to get them out of the game before that, right. before that give up part. But other times they're struggling, and you can see them getting mad, yeah. or you can see, you know, that that extra effort, and that's actually what you're looking for. Yeah, and. I think that's what we're seeing, <laughs> seeing out of, out of Paul and, and and Barnabas too. But yeah, yeah I don't know. Um, so they continue to pr- press forward. Um, we'll see that they go from place to place to place in, in, in uh, is it Lystra? Mm-hmm. You, you should never have me pronounce names. <laughs> you, you ought to know that, but uh, like now. Um, things got actually worse. Yeah. So they actually healed a person who had never walked before. Yeah, isn't that cool? That is so cool. And, and in fact, it was so cool that the crowd thought that they were gods. Yeah. And so they started yelling in their local dialect, yeah, right? Which instead of in Greek. So Paul and Barnabas knew Greek, didn't know this dialect. Right. So they're so just they looking really around what like going what's yeah. going on and they are they're yeah. starting to worship them. They're going to start yeah. sacrificing to them. Yeah, they're going <laughs> to Yeah. So things things were getting out of it and it was good, right? They weren't going to be stoned, you know. Right, it, was, yeah. it was the good side, but they obviously had to put a stop to it. Yeah, you know, and and get things out of the way, and then, you know, you can almost see him saying, "No, no, no, I'm just a man." Well, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You just healed. Yeah. Guy, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know that type of thing. Um, but they finally got through that they were just men, and they and they they had a different message yeah. that they that they wanted to get to. But fun fun fact here is that they the the local people looked at <clears throat> Paul and Barnabas and said, "This must be Zeus and Hermes." 
And of course, Zeus is like the, the, the father god. of the Greek gods. Yeah. And, and then Hermes is the one who, he was the messenger. He was the messenger. Yeah. yeah. You know, the guy with the little. Yeah, right. So uh, Mercury, Mercury and the Roman yep. gods was the same as yep. Hermes. And, you know, Jupiter and the Roman was the same as Zeus. And it's interesting that they looked at Barnabas as Zeus and yeah, Paul as Hermes. Because Paul is the one Paul's who's actually preaching, the message, and, and the god, the head god, would be in the back. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So you're seeing how you, you, even without Luke telling us, this is the structure of how they went when they were. You can see Barnabas is sort of overseeing things, managing things. May have been older than Paul, yeah, very likely. And right. Paul was the preacher, and so they're like, ah, this is Zeus, and this is Hermes. Another fun fact is is Hermes, the root word for Hermes, is where we get our word hermeneutic. Nice. It's the same, and it means to, yeah. it, you know, because Hermes was the one who basically interpreted the gods to the people, you know, gave the message to the people. So just some fun stuff in here that, that reminds us these are real life people. This is right. what real life actions. And, yeah. And if you don't know the history or, or the area, you kind of, you lose part of that. Yeah. Right in there. Uh, but the same old thing happened, right? Jews from, uh, well, this time it was Jews from Antioch and uh, Iconium uh, came. And this time they stoned Paul and left him for dead. Left him for dead. Outside the city, finally got rid of this guy. Yep. Uh, verse 20 says the disciples surrounded him. So I'm assuming that these would have been the new Christians, that the newly converted people from yeah. from, from the city there. Yeah, right? I would think so. Yeah. Um, and, you know, going, going back to where was Paul's head, I mean, he just got stoned. <laughs> now he's... Right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> how do you keep pushing on? Right. right. How, how do you... Uh, and But it says that he got up and went back into the city. Right. Right. Um, and... He tells us in a minute where, where he why why he keeps why he keeps going on. Yeah. So the next day they went to another town in Derby. They proclaimed the good news. They made many disciples. And now they make a decision to return back to the three places that they had just gone to. Yeah. To go back. So if we think um, you know nobody was converted there, this there was no success at all. It's not true at all. Right. Right. There were people to go back to. So, and and the news that he had been killed. Yep. Had obviously gone to these places. Yeah. You know, we finally got rid of him. We killed him and left him for dead outside the city. Who comes walking in a few days or a few weeks later? It's Paul. I thought that you were. Yeah. Well, they tried. Yeah. So check out. Here's what he said. You know, so where was Paul's head? Um, um, verse 22 and 23. They strengthened. And this is why they went back to. They, they strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, we must enter the kingdom of God through many persecutions. Yep. And then when they had appointed elders for them in the various churches with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the protection of the Lord in whom they had believed. Yep. Right. So they're. They're establishing churches there. They're establishing a leadership um, in these churches. Um, yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of a cool thing. You know, he doesn't here. know if he's going to be able to come back to these places at all. He doesn't right. know what's ahead of him. Um, they're going to go into Jerusalem here, and he never knows when he's going to be arrested in Jerusalem. If he's going to be killed at the next city because they missed last time, you know. So he he always has to live with this. Uh, this this death threat over him. So he's the task is in front of him. He's got to do what he can do right here, right now, and then just trust God is big enough to to handle the rest. Right. So that was basically his first trip. Yeah. Right. So so they then went back to Jerusalem, reported back to the brothers there. Hey, here's what happened. Here's all here's all the stuff. You know, yay. And and they considered it a door open to the to the Gentile nation. Yep. But <laughs> what do you mean but? <laughs> <laughs> but while they were in Jerusalem, yes, a door is open to the Gentiles and all this. <laughs> but this trouble that they're having out there comes home. What do you mean Gentiles can be saved without, 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 without? You know, we had yeah. to do all this stuff. Are you sure they don't have to be circumcised? Are you sure they don't have to? What, what are you out there teaching anyway? Yeah, so I think I said that uh, they went back to Jerusalem. They actually went back to Antioch, where they where they started from. Yeah, because right. that was their home base, yeah. Antioch yeah. up in... And 
and people from Jerusalem, or, or sorry, Jewish Christians from Jerusalem came down to Antioch, and, and we're, we're stirring up the problems now, right? Right. That's, yeah. yeah. Right. I, 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 you might have said that. Yeah, well, I, I, think I probably just misheard you because I was, I was thinking that that was going on, right? So we're, um, so they ended up saying we need to hammer this out. Right. We cannot let this. This is a. This isn't. This isn't like you know. Well, you can believe this, and I can believe this. This is the gospel that we're preaching. This is right. what are we doing with Gentiles? Right. So, what, did you say what the issue was? The issue was um, ultimately it came down to. Do Gentiles have to be circumcised right. in order to be saved? Right. So that's the whole question, yeah. right? So, um, and, and I love it from the standpoint, it brings up the question to ask everyone, what do we think takes to be saved? Right. You know, what are the requirements for salvation? Yep. Um, um, I love uh, one of the elders here at, at Oak Tree in the past says, uh, throw it all away. What's the minimum required? You yep. know, what's... I don't, I don't do, I don't do full. Just tell me what the minimum is. I just want to skate by. Well, you know, what do I have to do to skate by? Yeah. And and it's it's a good question. I don't think we should answer it right yet. No. <laughs> we'll just we'll let people let uh, let, let people do all of it. Think about that for for a little bit. What yeah. we can Actually, say it comes, it comes up. <laughs> and what we can say is that circumcision is not required. Right. This was, so what we what we find is this is the first major. It's it's sort of a council. It's not. It's yeah. the first major doctrinal issue yeah. that the church has to wrestle with. They've already wrestled with should Gentiles be allowed in, but they didn't. I mean, yeah. the, but that wasn't. That was a guy came back from a mission trip and they yelled at him for a while and it got hammered out. More yeah. of a misunderstanding. Right now it's. I have a question. We have doctrine. We have that to. We, need we have to, to figure this out. So Barnabas and Paul were commissioned to go to Jerusalem. And figure it out. Right. And so they met in Jerusalem with the congregation and the, ch the church that was there. Right. The apostles are there. By this time, there are elders in the church. Because right. we're talking uh, we're talking in the neighborhood of 15 to 17 years after the church has started, after Acts 2. We don't get very many time stamps. Yeah. But we know that this is right around 49 or 50. And the church began in Acts 2 and 33. So we're right in that 16, 17 years. So there's not just apostles in the church. And we saw in chapter 6 there were maybe these deacons or whatever. Right. But now there are elders in the church. And the elders are actually leading and ruling the church. And the apostles have taken a step back. Right. And so Paul and Barnabas come in and they say, this is what we're preaching. Circumcision is not required. Well, what does Peter say about this? Because he's still a yep. you know big guy. Yep. Peter says the exact same thing that Paul and Barnabas did. But you got some Pharisees who've been saved. Hold on a second. You got some priests who've been saved. Hold on a yeah. second. We're still. Yeah, and I, I love I love Peter's reasoning. Why would we add a yoke, right? So so and, and Jesus said that right. My my yoke is light. Yeah. And the idea is that you know we're animals and we have to we have to have the yoke on, but. Um, adding circumcision as a requirement uh, for males is like, hmm, do I really want to go down that road? Yeah. Well, and it's, it's, um, I think it's funny because it's sort, it's almost the same argument in Galatians chapter two that Paul used when Peter was sort of starting to pull back from the Gentiles. Right. He had Not gone to Antioch him. and he's like, well, you know. Uh, and he's like, why are you putting something on them that is unnecessary? Why are you burdening them down? Right? And so here we are a few years later and Peter's standing in Jerusalem. Why are we burdening them? Why are we weighing them down with stuff? And Paul's sitting there, hmm, where have I heard that yeah. before? <laughs> it's parroting my words. <laughs> but they're all on the same page. They went into a private council. Okay, yeah. so now now it's not just the congregation. Now it's a private council. It's just the elders and the apostles, and they're really hammering this stuff out. And then I like what happens is that is they, they come out, and James, not the James who's already been killed, obviously. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> Which is good. This happens to be James, uh, the half-brother of Jesus, right. who, who wrote the letter of James later on in the, right. in, in the Bible. He st stands up and says, now listen to me. This is what we're going to do. We've had all the discussion. We've had all the talking. We've looked at it from every angle. Yeah. But you'll notice they didn't take a vote. They didn't take a, you know, what does everybody think here? They hammered it out. And then James stood up and said, all right, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what do you say is that we're going to do? Circumcision is not required. Right. We can't right. find it in we can't find it in the Old Testament. We <clears throat> can't find it in Scripture. This is not for Gentiles. This, the Old Testament, and of course he didn't call it the Old Testament, but the Scriptures. Yeah. Tell us that Gentiles are supposed to be saved. We do, I mean, look at all the kingdom passages. Look at all the, you know, Gentiles are welcome. Why would we do something that, in fact, the way he put it, I, and I think is a great principle even today, why would we make it harder for people to come to God? Right. We should, I mean, that's true today. Why are we making it so hard for people? We're making it harder than God does. And we should probably stop that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they just, he decided, he said, we need to write a letter. Yeah. Right. And that needs to be in the letter. And then he gave uh, four points to that. Let's, let's add these. Yeah. Um, these aren't required for salvation. Don't no. think about it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they're good ideas. Yeah. Because, um, and his point yeah. was that even the Gentiles have Jews around them and Jews are still trying to figure this out. And it really comes down to, okay, we're, you know, we're not going to put a whole bunch of stuff on you, but some people are still living that way. So don't be unnecessarily offensive. Yeah. And we'll see that a lot in Paul's letters yeah, too. Yeah, especially uh, in Corinthians and Romans, yeah. this, this same content. And I wonder if maybe this is sort of that, kind of this, the springboard where, where Paul really yeah. picks up on that and says, let's yeah. stop being offensive. So abstain from things defiled by idols, abstain from sexual immorality, abstain from food, uh, from animals that have been strangled. Yep. There's, there's a blood thing and abstain from blood. Yeah. And at least two, if not more, show up in Paul's letters all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. And so they sent this letter and, and or they wrote out this letter and they gave it to Paul and Barnabas and said, you can carry this around and show it. When, yep. You know, this is the official doctrine of, of the, the Christian church. Yeah. So Paul and Barnabas went back, you know, would have showed the church in Antioch. But then also seems like they would have gone to the other churches yeah. in the area. Right. Yep. Yep. Hey, here's what we had. Um, then there was then there was a little split. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So because they're going to start with. They're, They're going to go on a second mission ready trip. Ready to go on their second trip, right? Yeah. And they had a split over John Mark, and and I made a point of saying it um, early on. Uh, John Mark was going with them. Uh, it was a relative of, of Barnabas, uh, and then all of a sudden, it's uh, Mark or John Mark left. Yeah. On the first trip, about halfway through, yeah. he's like, "I'm not cut out for this." Yeah, but we, we don't know. We don't know why. Yeah. Right. Um, so this time, you know, hey, we, we need to take him again, and Paul's like, "Nope." nope. So it was bad enough that Barnabas and John Paul went this way. Uh, would they go Cyprus, yeah. uh, which was Barnabas's but yeah, it's hometown? Yeah, where Barnabas came from, yep. right? And then Paul went to his hometown, and he went with a, a new, uh, I think, a new guy for us, a guy by the name of Silas. Yeah, he had shown Silas has shown up as one of the workers in Antioch, so apparently he was of good reputation or whatever. And Paul said, "I want you," and they took off, and yep. effectively now have doubled yeah, their double, ministry. Yeah, right. Right. So there's a big question on how big was this fight, really? Um, sometimes I think it gets overplayed. Oh, they hated each other so much. They went their separate ways. Um, there was definitely reconciliations yeah. later. Oh, yeah. The language, the, the language in here, uh, the net says a sharp disagreement. I think that's an understatement. Uh, the, so you the, think it was I, a bigger I think bigger at fight? that moment, it was a big <clears throat> deal. I yeah. really do. The the Greek word behind that really seems to indicate that that it was a big deal. They okay. were pretty yeah. well yelling at each other whether this was yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Uh, then we get into chapter sixteen and we see that um, a, a younger man by the name of Timothy um, also meets up with with Paul. Yeah. And it's really cool with the introduction there, and we'll see that Timothy and Paul have a, have really a lifelong relationship. Yeah. Father son mentor mentee teacher student yeah um yeah he becomes of, one of he timothy becomes one of uh paul's trusted advisors trusted ministry uh co-workers uh and like you said father son really is is something that shows up a lot yeah so but one interesting thing that happens because we just determined that circumcision is not a requirement nope. so the first thing paul makes timothy do go get circumcised, go get circumcised. so <laughs> that he could have a ministry with the Jews in the local place. Hold on a second. Right. So, so how are you going to explain this one? I'm going to let you explain this one. <laughs> so, what I mean, 
what what do we know about Timothy right here in the text? Well, Timothy is Timothy is a Jew. Um, there's some question that his father wasn't. Well, his well, no, it says right here that his father was a Greek. He yeah. was the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer. So we've got a Jewish woman who's is a Christian, a Christian now, right. but his father's a Greek. His father's a Gentile. That would be why he wasn't circumcised, but he is still Jewish. Right. And so Paul's like, okay, if this were just a Gentile, never would have never would have happened. But he is a Jew, and if we're going to work with Jews who are going to question a Jew and a Gentile together and not give them the time of day, right. Right to right to be circumcised. So it was right for him to do it, not because of his, not in order to be yeah. saved, and that's the key. Right. He's already saved. Right. He's already so it's right for him to do it in order to help save others. Right versus versus himself, which really falls under uh, what James said. Why are we making it harder for people to come to God? This this was not one of those things that was that was worth standing your ground on. To say, I will not do this if it's going to turn off a, a huge part of your audience when ultimately it doesn't matter either way. Yeah. And I say that and that's almost that's sort of not true. For In this context, it, it is true. But circumcision was still the sign of God's covenant with the Jewish people. Right. And so the fact that Timothy wasn't circumcised as a Jew, there was a, a downside to that. So it is still, for the Jewish people, it is still the sign of the covenant. Yeah, and we'll see later, maybe we'll see in Acts, uh, definitely in Paul's letter, uh, um, in the future he goes to a, another Jewish place, taking with him uh, a person that was intentionally not circumcised. Right. Um, for the same reason, to present the gospel. So what was the difference there? He was a Gentile. And, and in that case, if it's the one I'm thinking of, um, this was in Galatians where he said, I, I took Trophimus to Jerusalem to see what the apostles would do. This was a little bit earlier in his ministry to see, are the apostles going to make him be circumcised? It was before chapter 15. And okay. so it was It was almost a test case. I was thinking it was late. I, th I was yeah. thinking later that he did it. Let's uh, see there if was, it comes up. There was another, I, I think there is another one. There's a Gentile that comes into Jerusalem with him. And, and so, yeah. Yeah. And it seemed in that point, Paul was uh, f forcing the issue. Yeah, he, of, he wanted it's to not find a, out. It's not a requirement. No, I mean, you know, it's not a requirement. We said it's not a requirement. Yeah. You don't have to be circumcised. Yeah, yeah. But again, it's a Gentile. So specifically is... is yeah doing that so that's where we stop um and and we stop there uh, sort of intentionally because it does fit with the the circumcision discussion yeah. in 15 that yeah. comes up again at the beginning of 16 but now next week we'll go into into you know 16 yeah, 17 really 18 five, and, five verses in right? yeah and, and really get into the next really what is this next uh you know missionary trip look yeah. like okay good so uh as always, a lot of good stuff in there. Um, if you have got some questions or some insights, we'd love to hear those, and we can address those if you have some questions. Um, but take a look at this. Read this very carefully. Uh, see how Paul and Barnabas act with each other. See how, you know, the, the, the persecution, like, like the Gary said, where is their head in the middle of all of this? And see how you can apply that in your own life. And we'll be back next time as they really get into their second missionary tour. Bye, everybody.